or call me Tara if you're on YouTube. My pronouns are they, them. And today what I'm creating for you, or for the collective of people that find this video, is an energy art session where we do some work with your energy body or your aura, the system of energy that moves through and outside of your body, um, to synchronize you to a frequency of feeling protected, feeling loved, and feeling safe. Um, all of this is going to be a grounding session, so I'm going to ask for a lot of participation in this session. Um, I'd also like to remind you as we open the session that you are the one who is initially or uh, eventually kind of doing the energy work on your own self. So whenever I am performing an energy session, I am just the guide um, or the channel with which this energy flows through. Um, this is not me giving energy to you, so you cannot draw in anything that you're not already willing to receive or needing to receive um, from your own self and from the forces around you that do assist you that you're already working with. So um, as we start getting into this session, I just want to invite you to start breathing, taking deep breaths down into the belly to ground your breath down into the bottom or more subconscious areas of where your mind connects to the body, to your embodied experience. And I just want to guide you into this space of feeling secure, feeling safe, and feeling protected. I already have a candle lit next to me and I hope you can hear the beautiful crackling noises that it's making. Um, I believe this is a wood scent, let's see, weathered wood is the scent. This is a wood wick candle, so it does um, have kind of that uh, nice crackly noise. Um, and I have dressed it with some Hansa oil, which is from Memphis Conjure. Um, and so this is a charged kind of third eye type protection oil and that is kind of the intention that I want to use today so I'm going to shake this around a little bit and I'm going to use it on my hands to protect the space and just start by reaching into your energy body um, and pulling forward some of the mm, energy I guess that you are that is maybe attached to you because of anxiety or just feelings that we experience naturally as human beings that do attract um, what we might think of as like lower vibrational type of uh, energies or thought patterns. So, um, and before I do start doing some energy work with you, I just want to let you know um, that at this time, in order to receive, I would just like you to say some kind of opening or some kind of um, prayer or intention, whatever your, um, whatever your belief system allows for you, uh, just to say I'm ready to receive this security, this stability, this protection um, to surround me and just be a natural part of my frequency at its normal functioning level. So I'm setting the intention that this energy is going to be something that does not only uh, exist as a uh, experience that surrounds us at this point in time, but it becomes something that we are attuned to. And what that means is that um, it is a it's part of your baseline. So everybody has foundations, right? It, everybody has a natural frequency that they follow at some point in their life um, or for a duration of their life and our frequency, our baseline will change over time. But I want to set the intention that this uh, kind of reaches into that baseline and it allows for you to uh, kind of alter that frequency that you naturally lie at to allow for you to feel protected, um, secure, guided, um, have that faith kind of energy in your own self, your own decision making, and the guidance that comes to you and the people that are around you. Um, so I'm going to start to reach around you just I'm seeing this energy as like liquid something that moves really easily so I'm just almost like reaching in and uh, pushing taps 
to allow for this um, energy that is needing to flow through us and away from us um, to just be invited to take those channels out, take those channels into other spaces and recognize that maybe it's not welcome here anymore, not needed. I feel like a lot of times the desire for protection comes from a feeling of anxiety or feelings that have to do with anxiousness, um, feelings that are surrounding our ideas of security and abundance and prosperity and being provided for and loved. Um, a lot of you I do feel like, and at least for me personally, um, this energy is going to assist with feelings of security and relationships. Um, so this does go back to, again, with that foundation type energy, our um, origins of life, our childhood, the ways in which we were taught to navigate this world. Um, and so I'm going to reach my feeling that there's a lot of attachments that are behind you in places you can't really see or you're not fully aware of. So I'm just inviting these to loosen again, like that liquid flowing, especially behind the throat area. I am feeling like there's a lot of stuff that's attaching to the way you uh, express yourself, um, preventing you from expressing yourself fully. So we're going to start to loosen these knots, let this start to flow. And I want to start to make this a more intentional space as well. Um, I'm going to be using this incense of the West. I am feeling like a lot of you are scattered. It's really difficult for me to kind of focus in on this. Um, and I, f I do feel like that's energy that's kind of coming through right now in this session. It's just restlessness. So I'm being called to remind you to ground again. Get back down into those deep breaths that pull you down into the body. Maybe wiggle your toes if you have some extra energy. Wiggle your fingers for me. And breathe in one more time. Can you breathe in for me again? And out. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, continue your breathing as we're doing this session, alright? I'm gonna keep reminding you, but I'm just setting that intention right now. Okay, so these incense, since they're kind of like wood, Bricks. I do feel like there's a strong like wood energy that I'm trying to call in today because wood it has that longevity. I'm thinking about like the rings of a tree. Uh, they set the counting of time, but they also represent the establishment of something, something that not only exists in its initial form, but it exists. Um, in the form that it can expand upon and put layers around its own self. So, just calling in this kind of ancient wisdom to surround you, uh, guidance. I really want this to come from the third eye, so I'm going to start to um, almost call open the third eye to envision the way that you can heal your own self, to have some awareness of the ways in which your spiritual truths are coming through in the body. Um, I'm going to use this feather to start to kind of sweep it towards you. Just cleansing out more of that fear, that anxiety, these feelings of scarcity, of distrust, making room for you to attach to people, places, ideas, hear from teachers maybe, use support, things that uh, you resonate with, 
personally on your journey because not everybody is going to subscribe to the same things and the same ideas. And I want to send some intentionally right down to the throat. The throat chakra is the area in the body and the energy systems that is responsible for our communication. So if you think about the throat, it's where we take in um, nutrients and stuff. It's where we also dispel our own truth and we express philosophical ideas and things. So I just want to support your expression of your needs. Sometimes when we feel like we need this protection type of energy, it's because our needs are something that we're having difficulty having met because we are not able to communicate them or feel safe enough to communicate them. I'm going to hit this with the flame one more time. Make sure it's lit because it is a pretty dense item. you don't resonate with the chakra systems, um, I just want to invite you to think of the chakra systems as I reference them as the physical uh, energy centers in your body. Sorry, I'm having a difficulty getting this to stand up. So as this sits down here to my side, um, this is going to be kind of enveloping us in this space um, with this element of air to cleanse, to protect, to um, hold us almost like, like a fort or fence, um, to keep in this energy as we're healing and we're understanding what may um, bring about this feeling of feeling unprotected or feeling unsafe and just draw into us a really secure um, establishment of the function of what we need. Okay, I want to read to you something from the Dhammapada, and if you're not specifically Buddhist and you don't really resonate with it, just take it as like philosophy, as wisdom of connecting to um, the divine self. And so I just want to ask here, what do we need to hear to help um, remind us of our security, of our purpose, of our plot armor, if you will? One of my good friends uses that term, and I think that that's a lovely uh, phrase when we're thinking about our protection and our guidance and the way that we're always being brought into the things that have purpose in our lives. So, okay. So. If a man holds himself in high esteem, also, please, don't take this as gendered language. Um, I know it is gendered, but uh, I'm actually going to convert it to being non-gendered as we talk, so uh, I'm converting as we're reading. If a person holds themselves in high esteem, let them be vigilant, a careful observer, day and night, during any of the three watches of life. First, one must establish one's own high moral pr principles, then preach to others. There can be no gap in credibility and no disgrace. Let one mold themselves in accordance with the precepts they teach. Very difficult it is to restrain oneself. Only the self shelters the self. What shelter could there be outside the self? With one's self thoroughly tamed, one gains a shelter there. And I really do enjoy that, uh, that section of the book because it does remind us that what we have um, in a very consistent form is the experience of oneness, the experience of interconnectedness, of a piece of um, self that we experience within our own body, within our own ability to act from this place of what's it called, like independence, I guess, or autonomy. And so that gives us a sense of protection sometimes because we know, okay, if I'm feeling unsafe in a situation, I can recognize that, oh, I am, I feel unsafe. How can I address this? 
and instead of shutting down or putting my guard up to the world, how can I nurture and care for myself and be an advocate for myself? That's how we understand that we have a shelter within oneself. It is this home base. It is this place of uh, nurturing our own needs. Um, recently, I've been looking into different various uh, inner child working type of things and just understanding how to care for a wounded inner child. And one of these things is our nighttime routine or just routines in general. And so as I'm talking about this, I'm going to start doing some work around your root chakra because this is really responsible for our security and our stability and our groundedness. And I want you to start to remember to breathe deep down into this part of your body again as I'm speaking. But developing a routine, I feel like, is um, pretty important for our feeling of consistency, expecting, and being able to know uh, what we can expect, even in places that are uncertain, or times, um, relationships even, that are uncertain. Uh, being able to say, hey, um, this doesn't meet my needs. This is a need that I have because I haven't always had this need met. Um, but it's something that I know as an advocate for myself is really important. And so, like, back to the nighttime routine type of thing. When you're caring for a child, you cuddle them, you read them stories, you tuck them in, you get them in their pajamas, uh, you give them a snack maybe before they go to sleep. You take care of all these needs, and sometimes if we're neglecting our own needs, and our own desires even, because having desires met is also a need, um, we, we end up uh, pushing our, we end up being like the one that isn't taking care of that inner child, um, and that creates that feeling of, oh, I'm unprotected. Something I'm also being called to do is use a stone. I want to use ammonite, which technically isn't something that's in a stone, but it's a fossil. But I want to use this around the crown chakra as I talk about spiritual protection, psychic protection, picking up on fear-based ideas in the astral, um, or philosophies from other um, spiritual teachers and practitioners. Um, ones around, I feel like some of you may have taken in and absorbed ideas from people that are seeking to make money off of your fears, um, readers even, who are telling you, oh, you have entities attached to you, all these different types of things. Um, you, when you believe in something, it gives it power, right? So using this ammonite. Ammonite is a very protective um, shell in general. And I want to give you like a nice look of it. Let's see if it'll focus. But it has this like Fibonacci spiral to it. And it shows like what goes around, comes around. So what you believe in, what you attribute power to, it does eventually manifest that into physical form. This reminds me of like the hermit. The hermit is uh, self-actualizing a lot of things, being able to establish, again, like that passage, one's own moral principles, then deliver them to others. So I feel like for some of you, I just want to bring in this support to be able to recognize what is your truth, what is maybe a truth for another person, what purpose does this truth serve? Does this support feelings of security, abundance, prosperity, safety? I'm thinking of a campfire. <laughs> um, some of you would really benefit from burning things, burning your fears. Um, I'm thinking of a ritual I did actually in high school where I had just gotten really fed up with the narratives and the constructs that other people had kind of put on me um, and they made me feel really insecure and really unsafe. Insecurity can be like a self-worth issue as well. Um, 
or just like a questioning, a doubting kind of an experience. And doubt is a good thing. Doubt is something that helps direct us to the places that are going to be helpful for us. But uh, we don't want to stay there forever. So one of these things that we can do with this doubt and these insecurities is write them out. Like I did at that time, I wrote out like actual quotes and phrases of things that people that were close to me, people that I didn't even know, just projections that I felt from other people. Um, I wrote them out and I thanked them for coming to me. I asked, you know, do these have any validity? Do I need to learn something from this? And most of them, no, I didn't need to learn anything from them. They were just things I was taking on and they were affecting the way that I um, was able to invest in my own self and my own self-worth. And so what I did is I burned them in like a little bonfire. And so I feel like for a lot of you doing some kind of burning ritual, maybe using bay leaves, um, using some pieces of paper or something, uh, would be helpful. And I feel like to close out that session, you might want to write what you want. So do some kind of scripting of like, this is what I want to replace these energies of fear, these energies of um, frustration, and maybe not even replace them, but transmute those old fears, because fears are there to protect us. They're there to keep us safe, um, and they're there for our minds to really facilitate a place of us not getting hurt, and especially if you've been hurt a lot in the past, those fears exist for a good reason. But it's it's important to recognize when those fears or those anxieties have overstayed their welcome or they have more power than we want to give them. So I want to use this bloodstone and this snowflake obsidian. <laughs> this candle is kind of starting to make some funny noises, so I apologize. Um, but I want to use these. I'll show them to you a little bit. The snowflake obsidian reminds us of each emotion being unique, our own ability to see beyond the emotions, to use emotional pain as a tool, um, as something that is a natural experience. Um, it really is about recognizing our own unique, again, back to those needs, back to our own unique needs and honoring those needs, um, recognizing the root of those needs. Um, and I really do want to work with the root and the heart and connecting them so that, because our heart is really where our desires come from. That's why we say, follow your heart, follow your heart. It's a phrase that also holds like spiritual legitimacy. to remind a little bit of grounding down into the body, down into the body, down into the body. Breathe, 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 and breathe out. Breathe in, and breathe out. Okay, so we're validating, again, back to the heart. I'm sorry for interrupting myself, but we're validating those heartbeats. places where we have our uh, our calling, what, what we are meant to experience, what is aligned with us, what is going to satisfy these things that we have come to this earth to experience. And the root being, again, think of where the root lies at the base of the spine. You can't see mine, but it's where a lot of us hold our sexual energy, where we hold, uh, we have waste that comes out of this area. This is where we take a seat, where we rest, where we put most of our weight in the world. Um, this is a place of vulnerability because we feel a lot. We have sensitivity um, in like our thighs here. Um, it's the place where we stem down, our stems grow from here, our legs, you know, where we do really connect to the ground. And so I want these physical, ways of functioning and moving throughout the world to connect up to the desires and to um, be able to uh, show us the ways that we find security through these things that we desire and be able to meet those desires not in a way of being like uh, chasing or clinging or addictive not things like that but encouraging us to sow seeds of routine that support, that support 
our purpose and I want you to breathe again as I do this so I'm going to be using bloodstone and the snowflake obsidian um, I just got to put the bloodstone is but the or the snowflake obsidian excuse me but the bloodstone bloodstone is very heart based it does connect us to our blood like the name would suggest um, but also our own growth our ancestry the ways that um, our bodies support us I'm thinking of how our bones create our blood our bones are the structures the foundation the um, it holds us up you know like it gives us form it gives us shape and it supports all the rest of these systems if we didn't have bones to hold up our muscles and to hold up our veins and our nerves like they would all start to kind of mush together and we wouldn't really be able to like hold ourselves up and um, have these like very uh, important surface areas in order for these things to attach to and um, the bones they they produce the blood from the bone marrow and so that's what keeps our pulse it keeps us moving it reminds us um, I think of when I think of blood I think of impulse because it gives us that animation so I know I've been rambling for a while but I want to use this just around you especially down around the root chakra keep breathing for me please As I'm doing this, I am going to be uh, sending some of, again, I'm doing a lot of clearing with this energy, but I'm also starting to patch. I'm almost seeing like spack patch up little holes down here. Helping you to feel more whole, more purposeful, more direct. Great. that don't align thoughts and projections again we are really being called to remove a lot of these projections things that other people place on us or they assume about us or they try and impose on us voices I'm hearing of parents especially of grandparents, family members that have not checked in with you have not asked you what your greatest good is and again, I want to bring it up to the third eye really quick. Up to this area of sight. The third eye is right here in the center of the forehead. So think about this area. This is where, again, we think. It comes from the pineal gland, which is where we dream, where we um, send out hormones to, to grow, to mature. Um, but it's also a way that we draw in and perceive, uh, view, um, just think about the way your eyes work, the way that you express through your eyes and all these sorts of things. So I really want to, again, bring in an honor for your emotions, kind of hopefully pulling in some psychic protection as well, because the third eye, I think, is responsible for dreams, for how we envision the future, for how we see our lives unfolding. And just the information that we bring in on a spiritual level and we give power to. You are the creator. You are empowered. You are so protected and safe and secure. And you are not selfish for wanting your life to be magical and be fulfilling and to feel wanted and desired. You're also not selfish for wanting to have success or to be good at things or 
to have uh, alone time, to have freedom, um, to have the ability to help others. These are not selfish things. Um, and I feel like sometimes, again, back to those desires and those needs, we are patronized um, on different levels for having wants or having needs or having struggles uh, validating those needs. So, um, I want to use, I'm going to do the sound bell again just one more time. into the body, down, 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 down. Okay. And I'm going to use this. It's a letter opener. I've used it a couple times. Just to cut away more attachments. Anything that's like leftover, I'm seeing this as like pruning a hedge. Just little excess pieces. And after I do this, I want to I wanna blow on you, <laughs> which might sound funny, but I think that this is a personal attention that's needed right now, just to remind you how safe you are, how cared about you are, how loved and how needed you are. I keep seeing people's videos online about just the oneness, how we're all each other, like parts of the universe, experiencing individual things, but also experiencing each other. And so when you're trying to manifest or you're trying to draw in protection or whatever, you're protecting yourself from the experiences that you know exist because it's within yourself, but you're trying to transmute and feel an aligned experience or something that you're creating. And so with this protective energy that we're drawing in, that we're pulling up to our baseline frequency, we're just removing attachments to things that we know don't work for our own individual experience because as individuals we have unique things. And since we are the one, we are the creator, I am part of you, I am here to assist those who have a similar desire to myself. Together, as we all put our own intentions into this energy, it makes it more powerful. But it also helps us to detach. Part of um, calling these energies in is being able to detach from the outcome of an experience. To know with faith, with guidance, that we're loved, we're taken care of, and we have nothing to worry about. This should you start feeling lighter, more airy, cutting things away from the crown or the place above the head where we uh, think, you know, we have all these ideas where we possibly have religious beliefs, kind of cutting these things out, just detaching them, pulling away from the shoulders, from both sides. Any stuckness and tension that resides here, letting that go. Letting the tension release. And down behind the back, I'm feeling that there's some tightness in the lower back of maybe things you're carrying that don't belong to you again. Just projections. Expectations. Part of protecting ourselves is allowing ourselves to be vulnerable with ourselves. So I'm also cutting away... Um, any, any desires also that maybe subconsciously we're holding on to because of the socially constructed idea of them, getting us to take a good look at what we're actually drawing in, what we're manifesting. Okay. I'm being called to sender, and I want to send in the energy of two different animals. Um, one is going to be the bear, the protector. We think of like mama bear. That was kind of um, that archetype of like an animal that is fierce enough to uh, use fear to its own 
ability like it's almost like um using fear against those that might want to use fear against you or against others who are uh more susceptible to fear so it's kind of turning that fear energy on its head um and also bears are loving they hibernate they are uh nurturing they help like their family um but they're also confident in their own abilities as an individual creature to provide um they connect with the land think about they eat fish a lot of times if we're thinking about like bears that are native to the united states um where i am but fish are like the emotional realm they're also they swim in schools so i want to bring in these bears and these fish um just to kind of bring in both the water and the element of earth so that we have both the emotional body um, and the physical material body being protected right now i want you to breathe down into your body again and release and keep breathing and as you breathe in feel that you're breathing in this sensation of calmness of peace of clarity of guidance of abundance and as you breathe out you're releasing all forms of scarcity all forms of fear that doesn't serve all forms of feeling unsafe, all forms of um, frustration, of self-enabling things that keep you in experiences where you're enabling those uh, paradigms of victimhood, or, uh, you know, when you know that you can act, that you can help protect yourself more. I just want to call in that energy of action, of knowing, clear conversation, affirmation. Beautiful. I'm going to blow on you like I told you I was going to. Keep breathing as I do this. Go down into the body. Breathe all the way down. And the reason I wanted to do the blowing, my mom used to do that to me, just into my face to remind me, like, it's okay, it's okay, just to call me, I don't know, <laughs> air, it's a breath of life, it's the way that we call life into our reality. I have a couple decks that I want to use at this moment. If you're open to it. If you're not open to a tarot reading, just see this as general advice that you can take or leave at your discernment. So I'm starting with the Flowers from the Dead Oracle deck, and I just want to get an insight into um, the guidance, the protective energy that is surrounding us, what it wants to remind us of at this time, what our own protective or uh, provider type energy wants to say to us, our inner nurturer, our inner parent, chicken, bold, courageous. This is card 14, yeah, which adds up to a four. Fours in numerology are all about stability and security. They're all about I feel like at least this chicken energy, chickens form sisterhoods, right? Like hens, um, they have these collections or groups where they provide for each other's needs and they communicate a lot, they are fun, 
they have really strong bonds with each other um, and it's really beautiful and so I feel like just finding those people in your life to maybe talk about that or talk to not talk about talk to to provide you with a really stable secure feeling they remind you of all the abundance and all the nurturing and all the love that this world has to offer all that support so I want to send in the supportive energy right now I'm feeling that this is like a white glitter that's coming over the body going down to the root and connecting to the earth sh star chakra which is the chakra that resides within the earth um, so it's not actually connected to our physical body, but it is our energetic attachment to the land. So this, our land, provides us with culture and community, food, all these other things that really provide us. So just this white, uh, glittery energy to come down and all the way around you, surrounding you like a cloud. And with this bold and courageous energy, it's reminding us that um, it's n never bold or because when we think of bold we think of um, sometimes like intrusive or overbearing and that's not how it is to ask for our needs to be met or ask for things to be provided for us or to preserve or protect our own uh, peace of mind um and sometimes being courageous is being able to say, like, I have, I, this is a not, not a compromise for me. This is something that I'm not willing to sacrifice. Um, chickens are simple. They're sweet. So I feel like the guidance that's, that's with us, providing us with this protective energy, is simple. It's sweet. It wants to see us in a community. So I'm putting this back up against my Buddha statue. I want to get an affirmation from a deck that I made. This is not released, so you can't purchase it anywhere yet. Um, but this is the Cloudscapes Affirmation Oracle. And I'm going to start shuffling. Who's asking for an affirmation uh, protection that we're doing today? This is funny, this is the card that was on the bottom that I showed to you, so this is meaning to come out. It says, I have a magnificent purpose that I fulfill even as I rest. What was I talking about earlier with desires and purpose um, and fulfillment? I feel like there's an energy of being unfulfilled or like when we have scarcity, it's almost like we're running our wheels um, where we feel like there's a lot of needs that aren't being met, or we have something that is like, oh, we're grasping. And with this purple and this blue and this black, this is calling up to our higher chakras. Again, this communication, but I am really feeling like this third eye, this um, ability to see all of the abundance, to draw in, to imagine. Um, I want to tap on your third eye a little bit. Awaken this imaginative sense where you can imagine the best outcome. You can imagine yourself happy, kind of uh, almost beckoning, calling this imaginative, creative self to be able to see yourself in the best situation, to know that you don't have to constantly be working to call about this experience, this reality. Okay, I'll put this up here. I'm going to clear the air again with the sound bell. I remind you to breathe down into your body again. Feeling down into your legs. One more time. Down into the legs. Okay. And I have one last deck that I really wanted to use to get a bit more of a concrete message, maybe to our inner child. Or just the parts of you that are feeling a little bit more unsafe or needing of some security. This is the Gothmancy Tarot. Uh, this deck is a beautiful deck. Let's look at the back of it. But I just want to ask, what 
does the inner self, what does the part that needs protecting need to hear for the collective that's watching this? Okay. We've got the seven of pentacles. Prince not being called to ask for one more card to elaborate on this message. We have the tower. Look at these in case there are any messages that personally to you in the imagery and there's others that I may not be able to pick up on. The Seven of Pentacles is an earth energy. This is a card about foresight, about uh, the stages before the work, because the Eight of Pentacles is about work and actual physical like steps being taken, but the Seven is also about receiving. It's about drawing something in and also having faith. Faith in whatever we need to be taken care of. Faith in being able to ask for what you want, not just from other people, but from yourself and from the universe. So I am feeling like this is really being drawn to go within, um, like that hermit energy that I was bringing with Am and I earlier. Being able to really be clear on what you need and not having to sacrifice that for anyone else. Um, not having to sacrifice that to please other people. Um, not having to sacrifice that to maintain, like, uh, for example, if you have somebody who provides something for you, like maintaining that dynamic. Like, I get sometimes we're at the mercy of other people's, like, wealth or financial things, but being able to be like, okay, I'm not going to be sacrificing things just because I feel like I have to, recognizing that the universe needs you around, so if you make a decision to go in a direction where there's a lot of unknowns, the universe is always going to provide for you and have your needs met, um, even if there's some transition periods. With the tower in the reverse, that's again speaking to those unknowns, um, those experiences of change. Uh, wanting to kind of break free of this cage. Do you see how this head is in a cage? Um, the mind being trapped. Um, the tower speaks to physical changes um, or like where the, the mind attaches to the body. Having that significance um, really have a different experience. This is taking the the top off of the cage, unlocking. Do you see how there's keys going on in there? I'm being reminded of Hierophant energy with that key too, um, where we have the spiritual information that we can plug in to unlock certain areas of the mind. Um, so I do want to set the intention right now that part of this energy is an initiation, an ability to understand what is going to help you feel fulfilled, feel protected, and feel safe and secure. Um, a lot of this is a security thing that needs to be addressed. I want to look at the guidebook for the tower just to see if there's any message about this reversal. I am feeling like it's not very much a stuck energy, but it's more of an abundance of this energy. Um, okay, yeah. It says, for reversed, you are not wanting to let go of old ideas and ways of being. Use your time wisely and allow the tower to fall in order to revitalize the collective instead of perpetuating its imprisonment illness, unable to overcome obstacles or attain elimination, how can you induce much needed change? Unwanted change or induced change due to no longer desiring to live as we once were. We are free, but now we must rebuild. We must create something new and abandon the prior constructs and limitations of the tower. Quick induction into reality, insight, flash of brilliance. So, in order to have this flash of insight, in order to accept where we are and accept the changes and accept um, uh, turning over of a new leaf, how can you envision, it's really interesting that the Seven of Pentacles is here with it because these are really essentially saying the same thing. What reality do you want to create? If you're at an impasse, what is the next step? What action, what belief, um, what rest patterns do you need to factor in? What routines do you need to have that are going to facilitate this change and get this tower moment to be turned over to allow for this uh, next step to unfold? 
and being reminded of the chessboard as well on the bottom. This is taking strategic movements to get to where you want to go. I feel like a lot of you, you have what you want. Um, you've achieved some kind of manifestation. There's something that's already there, especially with this chicken, this bold and courageous thing. I feel like you're just holding yourself back from communicating that. And so it's creating an emotional impasse, an emotional blockage that you need to push through because this is a personal frustration, not really an outside limited um, expression of a frustration. And so because other people don't know what you want and you haven't communicated it, it's really difficult for you to receive that. And I do feel like that rest is really going to bring you clarity of what, giving you the voice, the words, and the message to be able to deliver um, what you essentially need to communicate. Um, this is a longer session, so what I really want to do to close out is just put on my hands again this Hamsa oil, and I'm going to make this hopefully nice around you again. And I'm going to put this on my hands just to bless and protect. Hamsa, I should have um, given you more of an insight into this at the beginning, but it's actually what's around my neck. It's kind of a, the evil eye, it's the hand with the eye on it. Um, it does come from specifically. Uh, it's been more traditionally used in Islamic cultures, um, but it's also used in Ju Judaism and Christianity and different religious traditions mostly, um, but through many different cultures. But the hand with the eye is a symbol of protection of divine intervention, which is kind of similar to the tower. So it is maybe sometimes um, us not always getting our way, but knowing that there is a divine purpose or consciousness that wants to see us um, have our desires fulfilled and have ourselves protected and so um, using this oil on my hands what I want to do I apologize for the honking what I want to do is just tap around you kind of with this motion just tapping around you sending in an energy of steel of metal to really encase you in a very protective shell right now, if you feel vulnerable, to allow people in, but um, kind of like a chamber to transmute these emotions that may be going on, these anxieties, into something that's more useful for you right now. And then I want to put a bit of a softer energy right in between that wall, between you and the, this more metallic energy that's more harsh and rigid. I want to put in an, a cloudy, iridescent, soft, almost like blankety energy into your aura. And I want this to be filled with peace, lavender, vanilla, these loving, self-love energies. And I want to remind you one more time to take a deep, 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 deep breath all the way in. And out, 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 out. Okay. Thank you so very much for being present and participating in something that I hope assists you. Um, I know I love to do it, and I love to be here for you as um, we all share in this energy. If you need to return to this video at any time, just to watch even a section of it, just to feel that protective energy, that um, reminder, that revisiting of the attunements that we've done today, um, feel free to come back. Otherwise, uh, I am so grateful for you. You are changing the world, and so am I, and we are doing it together. Um, thank you so much, friend. I want to thank your guides, my guides, every other force in the universe that brought us together, and I will see you in another video.